They are in the studios. We're talking about the crew from Atlanta Homicide, TV yeah. One's yeah. original true con- true crime series. Now the new season premieres Monday oh. at nine. They are in here. David Quinn, what's happening, Dave? What's up, he said Frank? it's Quinn. What's up? If you're from ATL, it's Quinn. Queen. 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 Okay, yeah. okay, okay, Quinn. <laughs> Vince Velasquez. What's up, what's Frank? up, partner? My How man. you doing, baby? I'm good, man. I'm feeling good. Feeling good. Boy, you know what? I was so excited the first time I saw you all on TV. I was like, I know them. Oh, <laughs> for real? Uh, you knew them before they was famous. Oh, we go way yeah, back. Yeah, I remember yeah. when you saw DJ Harrison's back. Yeah. Yeah, back in the day, right? Oh, y'all yeah. go back. Yeah, way back. ATL Homicide, man. Uh, you know, Ooh. first of all, congratulations on the success. Yes. Thank you. You know, thank you, thank and, you, and, thank it, you. and it's so cool because I was so tired of seeing crime shows from other cities. I'd yeah. be like, I have no idea what they're talking about, what they're doing. Right. But when I see you guys, I'm like, oh, yeah. We yeah. felt the same way. Exactly. Yeah. We had no idea what they were doing. So yeah. how did this idea come to pass, like to come to Atlanta? Well, you know, this is a, a, you know, basically a brainchild of David and I throughout the years working first forty eight working cases. Wow. Uh, we hooked up with some different producers that we know in the business, and uh, basically we shot a scissor reel in my living room, you know, a couple years ago. What? Yeah. Three years ago. Having a glass and of then, wine. Yeah, back. drinking a Corona, and uh, from there that sparked some interest, and then they started shopping this thing around. And I mean, TV One came in and was like, "Look, you guys are exactly what we're looking for." Well, how long before they picked you guys up? It was it was deep because we got turned down by a lot of different you know places, other media outlets. Wow. TV One saw the two minute sizzle reel and they were all over it because what was interesting they said we want you to be you on the street on the on the screen like you are in the street. Yeah, and that's what's yeah. up. And they let us you know help out with the producing. It was lovely. Yeah, and that's the thing with us when we looked at what TV One was coming at us with. Yeah, they were like be as authentic as you can. You know, we were like, can we cuss too? They were like, no, you can't do that. Ah, uh, <laughs> oh <laughs> darn. Life, you know, on the street, this is how we <laughs> yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like, you know, other than saying what you can't say, be yourselves. Where, you know, other ones were being, you know, they want to like format this thing to be mm-hmm. something that probably we weren't going to be. Right. So we were very happy with TV One. And everything is real stories. I mean, oh, this is, really these aren't happened. things plucked out of the sky. No. All real. These are, these are our, this is our diary. This is what happened during the course of the investigation. When you're a viewer watching this, you're going to think you're watching a movie every Monday night at 9, 8 central. Yeah. It's going to be on because we take you right to where it started. And what we're trying to let police departments know is that it's all about the people. The homicide doesn't belong to the police department. It belongs to the people. To the community. Yeah. That's right. Community. That's how you get them solved. Everybody's affected by that. Not, not, not just the victim, but even the perpetrator's family. You know, right. you got to consider that, yeah. too. you got to give that mama love because she might turn up and have something happen to her family. Wow. You know, one, one thing I want to say real quick is, is Dave, forever, I, I've always thought, man, like, you missed one of your callings. You need to be in hip-hop. Bro, you Bro. definitely got a hip-hop brother, voice. Don't, don't no, know. it's like, yeah, Yo, you know, you're going to your room every don't day at 9 o'clock. It's Queen. I'm like, yes, Never, never too through. late. Never too late. Well, it's just, w- it's just Atlanta. <laughs> you felt I'm, it, right? I felt it. I knew what For Frank sure. was going to say. Okay. That's hilarious. I like that. I like that. Let's yeah. get him a deal. Let's so, okay. get him a record. <laughs> let, let, let's, be, before we go to break, because we're going to keep you off for a while, right. let's, let's talk about you know some of the famous cases that you guys have worked on and how it transpired onto television. Mm. Mm. And how do you do that? Like, how do you, how do you go from a case that you guys got to sit down and remember and then transform that case to television? Well, I mean, it's an hour episode. Really, that's like 42 minutes of, of, of footage right. you know, with the commercials added to that. And it's hard sometimes because these cases could have been two years that we worked and we got to put them in 42 minutes. Mm. So the producers and the writers do a phenomenal job and put this thing in a, in, a, in a format that makes sense. And what, what I like about the way they do this, it takes the viewer along the journey with us, almost mm-hmm. as if you're trying to figure it out along with us along the way. Because ah. all the twists and turns that we dealt with day to day in real life, we're bringing that to the TV. So it's kind of like a murder mystery. Exactly. That's yeah. really cool. Well, you're in the front seat, my sister, of this murder mystery. We're giving you everything. There's no filter. So give us one. Give us give Yeah, us some, what's like the give juicy? Give us some tea, a juicy one. That, juicy one. That y'all were like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, if you episode one for season one hit us hard, yeah. mm-hmm. I'm sorry, and episode one for season two is phenomenal because it involves a couple that was kidnapped in DeKalb County and ends up getting murdered in Atlanta. It's a couple. Wow. Sister was actually pregnant. This case brought us to our knees trying to bring it in. I mean, we really were emotional about this, and that's the thing. Cops have to let this thing go. This is a people thing, man. And this case, really, I mean, me and Vin, 
we were up nights trying to bring this one in, and you're going to get shocked when you yeah. see this episode. This, this, is, this is a case where a couple were basically, for no reason, gunned down. And this pregnant woman, you know, I'm not going to give too much away, but just held on to life enough to save her baby. Wow. So this is stuff wow. we had to deal with to try to find these killers. But, you know, the, by God's grace, this baby survived, but wow. they didn't. You know, and it's just tough. And it's not work. I mean, it, you're, you're actually, you're in church when you work in these cases. This, I mean, someone's baby comes to the world. They're never going to meet their parents. And you're tasked with finding out who killed them. I mean, that was it was a tough look. And, you know, we've been in the game for 30 years. I mean, working cases. Is this stirring up emotions for you guys when you have to relive something that's yes, so emotional absolutely. for y'all? Yeah. Absolutely. It, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an emotional roller coaster because when you bring the families in and you're trying to give them some closure and answers, mm-hmm. you know, and something that just grabs sponsor they look to you for those you know you become a surrogate almost you replace that person that was taken you know and it's a huge responsibility so for us it's family to family to family so we work murder together as partners for 17 years so imagine all of these cases that we just we now transfer from this family to the next family to the next family and it go back and sometimes we have families that have several people that were killed in their families throughout the years and we're back to another family member what, what does it take? Because I know, Vince, you do a lot of training. What does it take to be a homicide detective? Hmm. You know, it takes patience. It takes uh, humility. It takes determination. It takes just loving people, loving a community, and doing a job that you really, really want to do. I've, I've always said, and David feels the same way, one, you should never become a cop because you need a job. You should become a cop because you want to help people. And if you can't cut it in homicide, you'll know in the first 12 months it's time for you to go. And we've had plenty of heart-to-heart with people in the squad room like, this ain't, this ain't for you. You need, had, you need to go somewhere else. That sit-downs with cops say, yo, money, this isn't for you. Hmm. You know, go cut some grass. Go do something else. This isn't your job because you have to love people. We love the citizens of Atlanta, and it shows on the screen. The citizens of Atlanta, it's not all about forensics and fibers all the time. It's about the constituency you put together on your career in the street. You're, I mean, because when you, I was a patrolman, I was down there at the Pink Stow on McDaniel Street all night long working, meeting people 30 years ago. And folks the street know what the pink stow is when I'm talking. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That is your constituency. So you're not just out there when a body drops. You're out there before the body drops, getting your bottle of water and your paper from the convenience store. See, that actually brings me to my question, because you guys do a lot. Your homicide detective is around the clock. How does your family, your son's in the building, That's how right. do they deal with you having to be always gone, always on call, and so consumed in what you do? Yeah, I mean, they, they live it. My son was five years old when I got promoted to a detective went to homicide. Wow. So he's, he's know nothing else. I've gotten called in in the middle of the night and had to bring him in 3 o'clock in the morning, put him down with the secretary, yeah. wow. go to a crime scene, come back, dress him into squad room, take him to school, go back to the scene, Whew. and then go back and pick him up at the end of the wow. day. Facts. Drop him off somewhere else Facts. and go back to work. Yeah. Me and this guy have gone to work before and had to go buy a shirt to change because we were Dang. smelling. Because yeah. it's been 26 hours already. And I had six kids and a wife that was a police officer herself, so she didn't give a brother no sympathy. You still mm. had to <laughs> fold the clothes and pick the kids <laughs> Up and work right. the murders on him, but I'd eat dinner and go right back into the street. Cause she said, "Nah, I'm the police too. You're gonna be sitting at this table with these kids, so you had to work it out." All now right. I'm retired, so y'all can do anything I want to do. I'm but you good. got a show now, so now you booked and busy again. It's good busy, my sister. Hey. Listen, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be back. Detective David Quinn and Queen. Vince Velasquez are here. TV One's original hit crime series, ATL Homicide. Returns for a second season, and it premieres Monday at 9. David Ooh. Quinn and Vince Velasquez. Yeah. TV One's original hit true crime series, Atlanta Homicide. Now, it returns Monday night at 9. They are in the building. JR, you start this session. Oh, man. I just want to know, for, from y'all work and what y'all do, how do you deal with the community? Hmm. I mean, Great y'all are question. out here serving, yeah. uh, solving crimes and murders. How does that reflect back on how people look at y'all when y'all out and about? They know us already. The community, we built our constituency a long time ago, grinding in the street. So you've got the respect. And, and see, here's the thing a lot of police departments miss. you got to cultivate and protect your witnesses. You can't just put them on blast and knock on the door, put them in the car, take them downtown. you got to do that thing on the, on, on the low low. Keep it. I mean, they may have to testify a year later, but you're protecting them because they want the bad elements out of our neighborhood as well. This, we don't have that no snitching policy 
you know, when we worked our cases, I mean, you it's all about trust. Right. And people trusted us. We weren't going to put them on blast too early. Mm. And, sometimes, and sometimes not at all. Some folks we just kept off the books. You know, and then with, with the way we rolled when we on the street is like, if you get out of your car, there's some drug dealers there. They know who we are. We're wearing suits. Right? We can out of a Ford Taurus. So they're looking around the corner at us like, okay, they're not narcotics. And, you know, so we walk up to them. We've had guys, I could tell he's strapped. I'm like, man, what do you, now this is a tool of their trade. So so this is going to sound bizarre. But what are you wearing there, man? You know, I got a 1911. Okay, cool. This is what we carry. Be safe out there. Hmm. Now we walk away. They're like, damn, what just happened? Hey, we don't work dope. My, my point is, right, this guy may be a homicide victim himself. Mm -hmm. I'm not condoning what he's doing, but we're there for murder. We're there for something else. So this is a source of information for later. So the community's not just the lady, old lady living in a house on the Looking street. Looking out the window. It's right. not just her. And it's not the, the preacher at the corner or the, the kids getting on the school bus. They're very important, but so is everybody else. Yeah. Because at the, at the end of the day, we have a job to do, and we need the help of everybody. We've it's, gone, listen, we've gone to the bluff before and said, listen, nobody's making any money for the next two weeks until we get what we need. Hmm. Mm. Ain't nothing being sold out. I was, that's that shut was it down. where I was going to. We're going to shut it down until we get what we need. When we get what we need, you can go back to work. And that's how that's the truth. True to life. That's how it works. What 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 you find probably sometimes is that there's sometimes a disruption. I was going to say a disruption in the business with Absolutely. somebody from the outside is disrupting everybody's money. There you go. They're and then they the wanted corner. it gone, too. That's right. They're, yeah. They want to get back to work. They yeah. want to get back to their normal day. So, you know what? Somebody got killed. We need to find out who did it, right? Let's all get on the same boat together. Let's row as far as we can, get what we need. We'll leave you alone. And if we got to come back later for another one, then we'll just do this all over again. But this is, that's, that's how it works. Wow. Yeah. What I was going to ask you, and, and we started before, what has changed, you know, in this business over the past 20 years? I mean, I, I've noticed yeah. one of the things we've talked about is the increase in um, girls and women getting in trouble oh yeah that mm. wasn't yeah. before like yeah. the jails are full of girls and women now where it wasn't that way yeah. it was, it was yeah. a smaller population what has changed especially here in atlanta over I, 20 I mean, years you know women who are who are basically assisting in whatever the operation is get wrapped up in homicide cases all the time you know these are women with children not necessarily pulling the trigger but these are women who are so far in this game with these guys that they get wrapped up. We got uh, a case uh, from, was it last season? Mm -hmm. uh, with the IRC. Yeah. yeah. And she, you know, this girl was hardcore. I mean, mm -hmm. she was hard as, you know, a lot of the guys we've met throughout our career. Until she got the conversation. Right. See, I, we want to liberate these sisters. I mean, you did ride for this brother, you know, or this, this dude you was kicking it with. It's all about 30 years. You don't want to do 30 years. What's the truth? Because we know she didn't pull the trigger. I mean, we can put her on the indictment and, you know, get her for murder as well. But I want to hear the story and I want the truth. Everybody doesn't need to go to prison for murder. I mean, we want to get the ones that did it. Right. A lot of times these, these young women are, are misguided and they just they feel like this is who their allegiance is to. Yeah. But we give them the talk. I mean, it's all about the conversation, letting people understand what's next. It's not about threatening. It's all about establishing trust. I want you to raise your children, young sister. Talk to me. We're going to take a break. When we come back, I want to talk about uh, something we talked about off air, and that is um, the culture that was in Atlanta when BMF was here, mm. and then the culture that was in Atlanta after Hurricane Katrina, which mm -hmm. really changed the face of what was going on in the streets of Atlanta. No doubt. We're going to have that exclusive conversation. Call everybody. Tell them turn on the morning culture. 404-741-WVEE. David Quinn and Vince Velasquez are here in the studio. And uh, before we went to break, I, I began to ask you because you guys have been, you've been doing it for so long. Dave, you've been doing it how long? Since 1985. 85? 95. 95. So you both were here during a season that everybody said changed Atlanta. Oh, yeah. And I call it the BMF era yep. of Atlanta. Yep, yep. Talk about what it was like during that time. I mean, it was a it was an increase in homicides that we had not seen. You know, it, it was we, we couldn't understand at the time what was going on. And then when we started to get with the federal agencies and find out what was going on with this BMF, you know, who they were, what did it mean, what's the total picture here, uh, we started seeing this, like, the homicide rate going through the roof. So we didn't know how to deal with it. We, we were understaffed, overworked. We still have other homicides we were trying to deal with. 
Uh, and unfortunately, you know, there were a lot of these cases that to this day remain unsolved, even wow. attributed to the BMF. So, you know, we, we had How to How do you think it, it changed Atlanta culture? I mean, the entertainment it, it, culture boom, it everything boom. Yeah, it glamorized it. It was, you know, it was, you know, likened to Scarface, you know, the billboard that went up, you know, uh, the world is ours, BMF. You know, it was, uh, it was a, an overt display of power, as far as I'm concerned, okay. yeah. on, on behalf of BMF. Almost like, let me throw this in your face. And I think, you know, for the city trying to catch up to that, you know, because that's what it was. We got caught off guard with this thing. We didn't expect it. We didn't know how to deal with it. And then we try to fix it. You know, at the end of the day, you know, the feds were involved. And I think uh, if I'm correct, I think he was indicted and eventually sentenced on drug charges. Yeah. But not murder. I mean, you know, he did get charged with a murder here in Atlanta. As a self-defense uh, as murder. A, right. It was it was a weak case. Uh, at the time, I was involved in it. I actually interviewed uh, Meech. Yeah. You know, he, he got shot himself. Yeah. It wasn't a that great... That night in Buckhead. But that night in Buckhead, where, uh, where Wolf got killed. Mm-hmm. Um, but it wasn't, a, it wasn't a case that I ever thought was going to be sustainable. You know, so after the feds got involved, after the feds put this thing to, to rest, we could go down to the, to the APD right now and probably pull 10 cases out that are still open. Wow. That probably never be solved. And then there was a period... After Hurricane Katrina. Yeah. What was that? So, Hurricane Katrina, we got some beautiful people that relocated to our great city, but we also got some fools. Mm. And those fools came in here and they really leaned on our gangsters to the, I mean, they were, what, they were charging our gangsters rent to operate. And it was to the point where we had built our street constituency over those years. People knew us in the street. The gangsters came to us for help. You know, they couldn't go to the club. They couldn't go to the strip club without getting charged rent. They couldn't. Wait a minute. What do you mean? Okay, so the gang from, what, did they have a name? They were moving they, they drug didn't dealers have... off of the corner. Local drug dealers that, that had a base here for mm. years. Moving them out. Shooting, killing, and now we own this corner. They were we doing own this it with block. force. Yeah. They, were, they weren't wow. just talking about it. They were killing folks. And so we put together a system. We understood they killed at least eight. We knew that in probably a year and a half. So we put together a case with the help of our local gangsters. Mm. Y'all know who y'all are who helped out, and we kept you off the books. And we ended up putting away like 15 folks that did Crazy. eight murders. Couldn't have done it without them jokers in the street. Okay, when you go back to the charging rent, what do you mean? Like if like so if they wanted to go spend money at club, Onyx. Young brother, I need, if I see you at Onyx on Thursday night, I'm going to need five stacks. Dang. Mm. That's real talk. <laughs> wow. wow. Okay. It was like that. Wow. Yeah, so so our gangsters, you know, our people, like, our gangsters have to shine. It's not worth the game if they can't shine and show what it's they got. It's Atlanta. It's the okay. ATL. Lashy, so baby. You got people in Jersey who wear over the same overalls for a week slinging all the dope. <laughs> but down here, we have to shine. It's just it's part of our culture. So these joke, these, bro- these brothers came to us. Clandestine meetings. All right, this is where their girls are. Here where the guns are. You know, and we just went to work. And we kept those gangsters off the books because it was just business. We had an emergencies going. And so once they were put down and they were put down, the gang culture really started. People were identifying themselves as bloods because that's the biggest gang in our city. And it got crazy. It just took off like wildfire because they created a robbery culture mm. here in our city. Mm-hmm. People stopped slinging. They're just robbing. Everybody's lazy. I lay on the floor all day in my grandmama's living room and I go out and rob at night. Those guys, they were called themselves the International Robbing Crew. These are Katrina brothers. Very meta of them. Yeah, because they had some from North Carolina, some from Atlanta, some from New Orleans, and they called themselves the International Robbing Crew. And that's what happened. We put them down, though, and uh, couldn't have done it with the help of the people in the street. Right on. Wow. Okay, Jay. Yeah, we're going to make it light. Right, get, 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 get a little lighter on, <laughs> on a little bit of the end here. Um, detectives, if you guys were not homicide detectives, what would you guys have done? Man, I would have been a chef. Like what? Vince, you, you can cook. Wait a minute. No. You oh, got oh, <laughs> okay. That's why. Wait, but that's you why. got the chef hair. Like, you got a chef yeah, vibe. I got to look for that. No, I mean, I could cook a little bit, but, like, I would have went to culinary school. I mean, that's something, like, I really, really want to learn how to do. Yeah. I just signed up for HelloFresh the other day. Like, really? I'm going to try. I'm going to see what I can do with this and see how this works they out. They do it for you, though. They <laughs> no, they don't. They, look, they got everything it. already. <laughs> Cut they it prep up. it. They kit. prep you it. Thank you. Salt in there. Yeah, you they prep it. But they tell you how much salt to put in there. That's, that's so right? You're not gonna kit. be like salt, salt bay. Like, yeah, I can do that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> not, 
<laughs> Dave, what would you be? Well, what's interesting, you know, I grew up, I'm from Wilmington, Delaware, and a lot of people know much about Wilmington. Um, there's a lot of brothers doing hard time in Wilmington. It's a no parole state. Uh, actually, Delaware is a no parole state. Mm. And so I went and visited a lot of my cousins growing up all the time. I thought everybody went to jail on Sundays to visit their family. I always wanted to be the police because I saw how they got handled, and I wanted to do it right. So since I was about six, watching Beretta and Kojak, mm. I wanted to be the cops. I already knew. Yeah, That's know all you wanted to do. Y'all, y'all, look, y'all looking like who the I hell? don't. That's a TV show from the 70s. <laughs> yeah. What? Wow, Jay. I cap pistol in my pocket. <laughs> what? Jay. I was born after he started being a detective. I wasn't Word. around either. <laughs> he said 85. Y'all don't I'm know like, who Beretta oh, was? Beretta. No. Wow. The car. The whole a, crew a in here doesn't know. Oh, that's a beta. Never that's mind. why y'all need me. Google in here. it. There we go. We One balance, last question. We balance each other out. Jr. <laughs> what, how are y'all spending most of your time now? Are y'all still contributing? I mean, oh, I know yeah. y'all retired. No, nah, man. We are. You know, we're partnering with the charity. You know, Solomon's Temple Foundation is. Awesome. It's a charity that uh, houses homeless women and children and one of the mm. few uh, shelters that allow young men to stay there up to the age of 17. So that's a critical age for, for, for yeah. young men. Uh, so, you know, we just had a, a fundraiser. We raised, we went way over our goal uh, for the fundraiser. So we're doing some stuff with them, mentoring them uh, and working with the community and, you know, just whatever we can do to give back. I mean, we, we're really, you know, whatever you see on a TV show, is, is it's, it's tragedy. But, you know, on the flip side of that, there's families, there's people involved that we want to be able to touch and, and maybe just bring a different perception of law enforcement. Mm-hmm. All right. So that's 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 what we're passionate about. OK, Beautiful. I got the last question. Yesterday, we had the Central Park Five on here. Oh. Mm. When you as seasoned officers mm. see that happen, how does that happen? Great question. Oh. Yeah, man, we, we had our own Central Park Five. In Me two, and this guy right in here. 2010. Yeah. Mm. The same facts. Everything that you saw on that and that that documentary, that that thing on cable I saw last week, put draw bring the tears. I was on my knees. Mm. I mean, it was just we had that happen in 2010 on a case. Yeah. And we spoke truth to power to get the right people because our department locked up the wrong people. For race. And a lot wow. of times cops won't stand up and say, yo, this might not be the ones, these these might not might not be the ones involved. And these young brothers have been locked up in charge. Same everything. Mm. And we we worked in. We didn't even we, work. We implored great. the DA, you got to get these guys out of jail. We were brought in because this sexual assault was tied to a, a crime spree. Mm. All right, the Jack Boys. You can Google that. Tamario mm-hmm. Wise Jack is doing boys. four life sentences plus 290 years at 17 years old. Wow. They killed, robbed, raped, but they arrested three young men, three young black men. Right on a faulty ID while we're involved in a homicide and we're telling them you got it wrong. Mm. People on the street this guy were telling spent us 35 days in jail until they finally released them, and it only happened until the DNA came back. Mm. We're like, we don't need to wait for the DNA, these are the wrong guys. Cops speak truth to power in your departments. That's all I'm saying. Right on. Here you go, everybody. David Quinn, Vince Velasquez, the TV One original hit true crime series, ATL Homicide, returns for their second season Woo! this Monday night at 9. Thank you guys I'll for coming in. Watching. And thank you for yeah. you got to come in more often, Thanks. man. Come on. Thank you. People Station V103.